please come to stand in the, uh, on your mat and have your feet together and then take your toes apart and bring your heels in line with your toes. So roughly speaking, that gives you hip distance apart. And then just um, lean forward as a piece till you feel the weight coming into the ten toes, the heels are aligned. And then lean back again as a piece till you feel the weight coming into the heel, back of the foot I should say. And then again lean forward into the front of the foot and then back again to the back of the foot. And you'll no notice the further back you go, the knees will tend to lock out. And then just go forward and backwards a few times at your own pace. And then just making the movement smaller and smaller until your weight is over the heel. And by the heel, I sort of mean, I mean this, this part of the foot, not just the back edge and edge of the foot. So you find the weight into the heels. And then once you've done that, just lift the big toe sides of the feet and then the little toe sides of the feet. So big toe sides. Lifting, so you come onto the little toe sides and then lift the little toe side so the weight is on the big toe side. If you just bring your palms to rest on the tops of your thighs, as you just do a few more of those, notice how the use of the foot is externally rotating and internally rotating the femur, the thigh bone. And then come to um, centre and then please bring your right toes forward. And then bring the heel down, and then the toes down, and then the heel, and then the ball of the foot, the toes, the ball of the foot, and then the heel. And then bring your other foot forward, so just bringing the toes forward, and then the heel down, the tips of the toes, the heel, the ball of the foot, the heel, done, just checking, and then the tips of the toes, the heel, and then the ball of the foot, good, and then release. And then just do a few little more, so we're just going from side to side, big toe side, little toe side, and then stay on the little toe side of the feet, and then just take a few steps, kind of forward, you can go to the side and back, staying on the little toe side of the feet, and then come to centre, and then just roll the contact of the feet again to the little toe side, big toe side and then stay on the big toe side, big toe side is down and then just take again a few steps, it doesn't have to be in a straight line, just seeing how you can move like that, just check that the hands are soft, that the elbows are soft and then pause and then once more just roll a little bit to the big toe side and then the little toe side, just going to, that's it, so we're actually not just working on the ankles, we're working on your hip joints and then come up onto the balls of the feet and then just take a few steps around, staying on the balls of your feet, checking the hands are free, the wrists are free, and then come back and then just go again from the big toe side to the little toe side, good, and then step, lift the front of the feet and then just see, can you take a few steps forward and a few steps back, so notice how being on the heels tends to press the knees back again, good, and then come to centre, and then once more find the weight in the heels, and then lift your ten toes, and then think of spreading them as you put them back down, one after the other to the big toe, and then once more lift, try and spread the toes as you bring them back down, and then press down the big toes and lift the four smaller toes and then press down the four smaller toes to try and lift the big toe. So my left one's always in a state of anarchy. Oh, there it goes. Press down the big toe to lift the four smaller toes, and then press down the four smaller toes to try and lift the big, big toes. Good, release. And now just imagine you're trying to pick up the floor. So you're just scrunching the toes under, and then release and lift the toes. So you scrunch under and release and think of lifting the toes and then pause and then think the sole of your foot is like the letter V, so little toes side, big toe sides and then think you're just bringing the two sides of the V closer together and then release. 
So you're just as if you're bringing the little toe side of the foot, the big toe side, closer together, keeping the jaw nice and relaxed, the breath nice and easy. So it's just to try and work with one of the arches of the foot, the transverse arch of the foot. And you'll perhaps feel, as you're doing this, can you feel there's a gathering of some of the hip muscles, pelvic floor muscles, as you narrow the soles of the um, feet, good, and then um, release. Just soften the knees a little bit. And then lift the shoulders up towards the ears, roll them forward and down, and then squeeze them together behind you. Come up, forward and down, squeeze together. And then just check you're not suddenly substituting elbows for shoulder movement. So you want to keep the arms long but soft. And then look forward on your horizon and then reverse. So, Quite often, you'll suddenly um, will be looking down at the floor when the muscles are hitting a um, kind of a more difficult place. So just looking forward on the horizon and then release. Bring your fingertips onto the shoulders and then circle the elbows together. And then as you take them wide, think of squeezing your shoulder blades together behind you. So you come forward, shoulder blades widen, and as you take the elbows wide, you think of drawing the shoulder blades together and then just reverse the direction of that movement. Just nice, easy breathing, looking forward on the horizon and then release. Bring the back of, the, sorry, the palm of the right hand to the back of the head and think of just brushing up to try and touch the ceiling and then the arm comes out to the side. So your other hand, so just brushing out. So you're reaching up so much that can you see the weight comes on to the left leg, the other heel becomes light, and then you reach the arm out to the side. So again, just brushing, keeping, looking forward on the horizon, so you're not shortening in the back of the neck. Good, and then one more time to the other side. Good, and then release. Imagine you have got a cigar. A cigar. <coughs> so you have your cigar, your cigar or chocolate cigar, whatever to make it, whatever uh, uh, PC, and then take your elbow to the side, turn your palm towards the ceiling, and fling your cigar out to the side. So cigar, elbow, turn the palm towards the ceiling, fling it out to the side. <laughs> So once more, uh, cigar, elbow to the side, turn, rotate the palm, the forearm towards the ceiling, fling it as far as you can out to the side, and then last time, elbow, palm, and turn the palm, fling it up and out to the side, good, and then release. Bring your thumb to your shoulder, take the elbow forward, and now begin to take the elbow behind you. But think actually it's that shoulder going back. Extend the arm, open the fingers and the palm, and then just try and rotate the shoulder forward, and then you turn the palm towards the ceiling. So you're rotating the shoulder towards the chin, and then you're opening the palm towards the ceiling, bringing the shoulder towards the chin, tucking the shoulder back to take the palm away. So thumb, elbow, again it's the shoulder, you squeeze the shoulder back to the spine to take the elbow wide so you begin to get a stretch. Extend the arm, the fingers and the palms, think you're reaching the arm away and then shoulder towards the chin, reaching it away, good, and towards you and away, good, and then towards you. And then bring your right arm forward so it's in line with the shoulder begin to turn it around itself to reach it forward and then to come back think it's your shoulder drawing back to the spine reaching it forward turning the thumb side down reach as far forward as you can and then think it's your shoulder being plugged into the spine once more forward and then shoulder and then the other arm so just again just try to reach as far forward as you can you can bend the knees use the hips and come back and once more going forward and then coming back and then last time forward good and then come back 
and then both arms going forward, thumb sides down, draw the arms back towards you. Going forward, bless you, and then coming back, good. Once more forward, good, and then coming back. Interlace the hands <coughs> super softly. Try to bring the heel of the hands together and then maybe the elbows too. And then just try to move the wrists around each other. Yeah. Just exploring an easy range of motion. And then pause, have your other index finger on top. Again, try to gather the elbows together and then just begin to wrestle the wrists around each other. Good. And then release. And then bring your fingertips to touch in front of you. And then just stretch the hands forward so the heel of the hands come together and then release. Point them down towards the floor, release, towards me, release, towards the ceiling, release. And then if you can, point them towards yourself. And can you see I'm allowing my back to round to create space to do that? So once more towards the ceiling, towards me, towards the floor, towards me, towards the ceiling, and then towards yourself again, trying to bring the heel of the hands together, good, and then um, release. Bring both arms out to the side, flex back your fingers and palms, try to push through the heel of the hands, so you often get quite a nervy stretch to do that. And five small circles in one direction, Good. and then just reverse the direction. Good. And then bring one palm up, the other palm down, and then turn other palm up, other palm down. So, so, the, so one shoulder is rolling forward as the other rolls back, and other direction. Good. Once more. Good. And then once more. Good. And then release. Please um, uh, bring your elbows into the sides, tuck them in. Think of squeezing your shoulder blades together as you open your hands out to the side and then come back. Turn the palms down. Think, think of shoulders drawing together to take the hands wide. Good. And then come back. And then have the palms facing each other. Think of squeezing your shoulder blades together. Take the hands wide, but careful that you're not putting a back bend into it as well. So you want to keep the weight into the heels, shoulder blades, take the hands wide, and then you release the shoulder blades as the fingertips come to touch overhead, come back, and then back to centre. Then once more shoulder blades, open the hands wide, take the hands up towards the ceiling, good, and then come back, and then release. Into, um, interlace the hands behind the back. Try to bring the heel of the hands together. Draw the shoulder blades together as you stretch the hands down towards the heels. And then just see if you can bring the hands to one side of the waist and then towards the other side of the waist. Release. Change the interlace to your other interlace. Again, bring the heel of the hands together. Just see if you can bring the hands to one side and then towards the other side and then release. And then with your right hand, right hand, just see, can you massage, give yourself a little massage to the other side of the body, just reaching wherever you can. See, I've allowed my chest to turn a little bit to do that. Where can you reach on your back? Good. And then release, other hand, so you reach the hand out. Just see, where can you comfortably, imagine you're in the shower, just trying to wear them with that itchy bit and you reach onto the other side, good, and then release. Take your right arm out to the side, turn the thumb side down, bring the hand to um, behind the, the back, take the other arm up towards the ceiling, turn the little finger side towards the back of the room and just see, can you interlace the hands, keeping the elbow up towards the left elbow up towards the ceiling. And then release, take your left arm out to the side, and you just see, can you bring it into the fingertips into the area between the shoulder blades, take the other arm, rotating it up, turn the palm towards the back of the room, and just see, can you maybe interlace the fingers, good, 
and then release. Just give the arms a little bit of a shake, bend the knees, round the back, and with soft fists begin to tap either side of your spine, coming down to your buttocks, coming back up to the area of the shoulders, come back down to the buttocks. And then with open palms, begin to just slap down the lower legs. Good, good. And then come back up. Good. Keep your feet hip distance apart. Good. And then just um, sit down, reaching the arms forward. Good. And then come back up. As you come back up, squeeze the bottom. So you're just sitting down as far as you comfortably can. And then as you come back up, squeeze the gluteals. And then once more, sitting down. Good. And then squeeze the gluteals to come back up. Now bring the hands together. So I was doing my James Bond impersonation. And as I reach my arms forward, I'm trying to pull in my tummy and round my back. So back, I'm pulling in the tummy away from the arms. And then release. Turn the palms towards the ceiling. Extend the back to look up. So you're rounding to come forward, pulling in the tummy, extending the spine, drawing the shoulder blades together. Good. And then once more, rounding to come forward. Good. Extending the back to come up. Good. Well, okay, warming up? Mm. <laughs> I thought we would. So please just imagine you're at the bar. You're leaning at the bar, so we're all tilting that way, leaning at the bar. So, uh, and you might tilt enough, or you could lift that other leg. Good. And then come back. And then we'll go the other side. So just tilting, head is tilting. So far, this other leg could lift. Good. And then come back. So that's tilting. This time, <coughs> see if you can bring your weight onto the left by, as if you're pouring the weight down into the hip. So not the head tilting this time. What happens is the other heel lifts, lifts, and then come back to centre. And then see, can you pour your weight down into the left leg? So the thing you have to be careful of is that you're not pushing the hip out or tilting, oh, tilting the head um, to do that. And then come back to centre. Once more, think of coming onto your left leg and mirroring, and then come back, and then onto the right leg, and then could you balance here on this right leg and breathe, <laughs> and then reach a foot forward, side, back, back and behind, back, side, forward, forward and side leg, without touching it if possible, Forward, side, back, back and behind, back, side, forward, forward and to the side. Well done. We will be in the Royal Rutland World Ballet Hall, <laughs> ready for the coronation. <laughs> so now bring the weight onto the left leg. Do you pull the weight down? Just see if you can balance here on this leg. Good. Breathing and then tap forward. Side, back, back and behind, back, side, forward, forward and side, then forward, side, back, back and behind, back, side, forward, forward and to the side. Well done. Just notice where you're holding the breath to do that, and then come back onto the right <coughs> leg. This time, lift the knee higher. Just see if you can balance here for a few moments. And then try doing it with the eyes closed. That's it. So just try a few breaths with the eyes closed. It's suddenly a very different proposition when you take the eyes out of the equation. That's it. Good. And then release. Good. And then bring the weight onto your left leg. So you, as though you're reaching down into that heel, that will help to lift the opposite side of the pelvis. Find the balance, whoops, find the balance first. 
And then just see, could you manage a few breaths with the eyes closed? Doesn't matter if you need to put the foot down and lift it, but just challenging it with the eyes closed. I'll keep talking because sound can help you to balance uh, um, in the absence of the eyes. Good. And then release. Now sweep your right arm in front of the chest. Follow the hand with the head and eyes as you take it behind you. Good. And then two more. See, inhaling up. Exhaling to reach behind, and then one more time, inhaling up, reaching it easily behind you. Bring the other hand so you sweep it close to the chest first, reach it in a big circle behind you, and then two more like this, inhaling up, and then exhaling back, good, and then last time, inhaling up, and then exhaling back. And then bring the right hand, palm up towards the ceiling, to go up and over, to stretch out the side, and then come back, and then the other arm up and over, to stretch to the other side, good, and then come back. Separate your feet and knees, uh, and about shoulder width apart. Now how far is very dependent on structure, and I like to do this with my toes, a little feet a little bit turned out, rather than in parallel. Um, but if your, toe, if your foot is turned out, you want to try and make sure your knees are in line with your toes. So, not this, in other words, with the knees dropping in and on the big toe side of the foot. You want the knees wide. And then um, look forward. Look forward. And then just see, can you sit down? Good. And then come back up. And again, inhale down. Looking forward, exhale to come back up, good, once more inhaling down, sitting down, looking forward, pressing down into the little toe side and the heels to come back up. Now maybe you don't need the hands to come down, and then come back up, good, once more, hands coming down, good. Bring the hands to the floor behind you, have the fingers facing forward. You say forward, away from the body? For, uh, forward. 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 Yeah, so if, um, watch, um, if, the, if the, good question, if the fingers are facing backwards, it locks out the elbows and takes away the possibility of movement. So bottom is quite low, and you're just thinking, can you bring your right knee in, and then to the side, good, right knee in, and then to the outside, once more to the inside and then to the outside, good. And then the other foot, pivoting it in to the outside, good. To in and then to the outside, good. Once more in and to the outside, good. Bring your bottom down, then allow it to support yourself as you roll down, good. And just keep the legs bent up for a moment. Just for, just for a moment. Keep the legs. So make sure you have enough support behind the back of the head so that the head isn't tilted back. Good. And then just have your hands resting on the ribs at the side. So the elbows are on the mat beside you. And then just allow yourself to focus on your breathing. So you take an easy breath in. And an easy breath out. As you breathe in, try to invite the breath into the ribs at the side or the waist at the sides of the body and to the back of the body. And as you exhale, blow the air out, allow the ribs to weave together as part of the exhalation. Again, inviting the in-breath into the waist at the sides and towards the back of the body. Good. As you exhale, just allow the ribs to weave together as part of that exhalation. Good. And then just two more like that. Nice, easy breath in. And out. Trying to breathe in and out. 
down through the nose if possible, keeping the jaw nice and relaxed. Good. And once more, easy breath in. Good. And easy breath out. Good. Just allow the legs to go long for a second. And then um, keeping your heels slightly digging into the mat, can you just gently oscillate the front of the foot, so just pointing and flexing, not to your maximum, so you just create what Feldenkrais used to call a jelly wobble <laughs> going through the system, as you're just gently pointing and flexing, keeping the heels tractioned into the mat, it creates this little push and pull through the pelvis, um, into the head, good. And then pause, and then please bring both legs back to standing. Good. And then do you remember, so those who are in the Orange Paul workshop will be very familiar with this, just the idea that your pelvis is resting on a clock, 12 o'clock towards the head, and 6 o'clock towards the feet. Could you just gently roll your pelvis a little bit, towards the feet towards six o'clock, causing the lower back to arch. And then think of pulling in the navel, by the tummy about two inches below the navel, to bring the um, lower back closer to the floor. So again, just going a little bit towards 12 o'clock, good, and then towards six o'clock. 12, um, once more to six o'clock, and then towards 12 o'clock, good. Now, um, please keep your Right leg standing, but lengthen your left leg. Good. Make sure the right foot isn't too close to the left leg. It's a little bit out to the side. And then begin to press down into the right foot so as to roll the pelvis a little bit towards the left shoulder where it's making contact into the floor. And then let the pelvis come back down again. So you're just gently pressing down into the right foot, keeping the right knee looking towards the ceiling, and then you let the pelvis roll back down again. As you press solidly down into the right foot, have the thought that the right knee is moving in the direction of the right toes. So it's the thighs lengthening a little bit away from you as you're pressing into the foot, and then you release. Just pause and change legs. So left leg is standing and right leg is long. And begin to find a good place for the left foot that isn't too close to the right leg. And begin just to gently press into the right foot to roll the pelvis to the left. Uh, to, sorry, press into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right. And then let the pelvis come back down again. So the important thing is to try and keep the knee looking towards the ceiling and a sense it's lengthening towards the toes as you press into the foot. And if you can manage to do that, you'll find some interesting movement going on working in the hip muscles on the left hand side. Good, and then come back. Bring both legs to standing and bring your right knee in towards you and bring your left hand behind the back of the thigh. Make sure that the left thigh, the right knee, sorry, stays pointed up towards the ceiling. Bring your right hand behind the back of the head. Take a breath into the waist at the sides and to the back of the body. And as you exhale, lift the head. So the elbow, the right elbow, moves a little bit in the direction of the right knee. If you're unsure, just have a look. So I'm not pulling the knee in, keeping the thigh towards the ceiling, and then inhale to come back down. So you breathe into the ribs at the sides and to the back of the body. As you exhale, just lift the head so the elbow moves in the direction of the knee, and then inhale to come back down. One more time, take a breath in to the waist at the sides and the back. As you exhale, again, um, elbow lifting the head, elbow in the direction of the knee, but you're keeping the thigh vertical. Because this is actually about your back going down into the floor. It's not about how far you can lift the head or the elbow and then release back down. Now just change legs. So left hand behind the back of the left thigh, 
right hand stays behind the back of the head. Right hand behind the back of the head. Left thigh is in towards you. Again, you want to try and keep this thigh, the left knee, pointing up towards the ceiling. Take a breath in. As you exhale, the elbow is aimed in the direction of the left knee. Inhale, back down. You can imagine there's a fly moving around on your knee, or a ladybird, something that perhaps nicer. And each time you lift the elbow, you're just moving it to try and, in the direction of that, wherever that ladybird has moved to on your knee. So you're just changing the angle every time you lift up. One more time, take a breath in. Exhale to lift up, good. Inhale to come back down. Now just change hands. So it's left, uh, left hand behind the head, right hand is behind the back of the left thigh. Take a breath in to prepare. As you exhale, again that ladybird is just moving around each time you lift up. Take each time, take a good breath in, exhale to float up. Careful where your eyes are looking, you don't need to see the ladybird. Just look wherever it seems natural. And one more time, exhaling to come up. Inhale to come back down. Now just change legs. So right hand behind the back of the right thigh. Left hand stays behind the head. Take a breath in. Exhale. Use the breath to help you move so that the ribs soften. It's the chest, the movement in the chest that's lifting you up. Exhaling to come up. Inhale to come back down. Good. And then one more time. Exhaling to come up. Good. Inhaling to come back down. Just allow the hands to come down by the side. Keep the legs bent up. Just very lazily roll the head and eyes a little bit from one <coughs> side and then to the other. Um, as if you're rolling the head to see what's beyond the right fingertips and then rolling the head to see what's beyond the left fingertips. So in other words, your nose, your chin travels in a little arc from one shoulder towards the other. Good. And then release. Now fold your right leg back in towards you. Into, bring the hands behind, both hands behind the back of the head, uh, leg. Try and stretch the leg up towards the ceiling or wherever you can. And just see, can you walk your hands up the leg? But look at your tummy. And then walk the hands back down. And then just see, can you walk up looking at your tummy as you're walking up the leg? Good. And then come back down. And then last time, walking up. Good. And then slowly walking back down. Good. Pause. Change legs. Bring the left leg in towards you. Bring the hands behind <coughs> the back of the thigh. Stretch the leg up towards the ceiling. Good. And then just see, can you walk the hands up the leg, walk to, towards the foot, looking at your tummy, big abdominal work here, and then coming back down, good. And then one more, two more times, just walking up wherever you can to do you can, but look at your tummy, not at your foot, and then come back down. And then last time, just walking up, good, and then walking back down, good, and then Bring the right thigh back in towards you. Here it is, it gets fun. Stretch the leg up towards the ceiling again. And then walk your hands up to where you comfortably can. Bring the left leg in towards you. And then throw it down towards the floor to bring you up to sitting. And then to come back, look down. Lean back. And then, as you begin, try to pull in the tummy, so you roll back onto the back. And then bring the left leg in, cycle it up, to bring you up to sitting, back up to the, the, the come back up to sitting. Now when you come up to sitting, just see, can you creep the right hands a little bit further along the, towards the foot. Once more, begin to lift the leg. The other, the straight leg acts as a counterbalance to come back down. Good. And then one more time we'll come up. Good. Good. Try to walk the hands towards the 
the foot a little bit more, and then see, can you slowly roll back down? Isn't that fun? <laughs> Good. Now, keep both legs bent, bring the left leg in towards you, stretch it up towards the ceiling, walk the hands up comfortable distance. Good. Bring the right leg in, throw it down towards the floor to bring you up to sitting. Good. And then just see, can you begin to pull in the tummy, look down, pull in the tummy so you're rolling through your spine to come back. That's it. And then you bring the right leg in, throw it down. Whoops. A little bit more momentum to bring me up. Good. Can you creep the fingers a little bit nearer to the left foot? Slowly roll back down. Good. And then last time, cycling up. Come up. Good. <laughs> and then again, slowly roll back down. Roll. Bring both feet and knees to standing about shoulder distance apart. Take your arms out to shoulder height, palm towards the ceiling, and then begin to tilt the knees a little bit to one side and then towards the other, just to help release the back. Keep the head looking at the ceiling, so just tilting the knees to the one side and then the other. And every time you come back to the middle, pull in the tummy, Bring that sacrum to the 12 o'clock position to go from side to side. Good. And then come back to centre. Please roll to the side and come up to into an all fours position. So hands are underneath the shoulders, knees are underneath the hips. Just careful in this position, if you just have a look, that you're not sinking between the shoulder blades. So really press down through the little finger sides of the arms, of the arms to help broaden the shoulder blades. So knees are underneath the hips, arms are underneath the shoulders. Take a breath in, and as you exhale, round the back up towards the ceiling, lowering the head. And then begin to extend the spine in the other direction, shoulders drawing away from once more, rounding the back up towards the ceiling and then extending the spine the other direction. Now just have the fingers facing towards each other so the elbows will be slightly bent. Keep pushing down through the arms. Take a breath in, exhale again, round up towards the ceiling and then begin to um, arm, lengthen the breastbone away from the pubic and shoulders away from the ears, draw them back once more rounding up towards the ceiling good and then arching to go the other way and then point the fingers to the outside outside and then again same thing so you're rounding to come up lifting up through the tummy arching to go the other way good shoulders back once more rounding as you're exhaling up towards the ceiling arching to go back now point the fingers forward again, come down onto your forearms. So forearms should be underneath the shoulders. So if you just again have a quick look, if they're outside, it means your weight is going into the shoulder joint. And so you gather in the elbow, so it's your forearms supporting you. And then take a breath in, and as you exhale, Lower the head round the back so you're brushing the top of the, head, the crown of the head on the floor towards the knees. Really put in the tummy. Exhale and three inhale to arch the back. Once more, rounding. Pull in the tummy. This really gets into the lower back area, hopefully. And then reverse to go the other way. And then one more time. So you're painting a line on the floor with the crown of your head towards the knees and then reverse to go the other way. Come back onto all fours, take a breath in, and then as you exhale, you ground the back as you sit back towards the heels. Oh, that's my knee clicking. And then look forward at the prize to come forward. And once
once more round the back to sit back towards the heels, pulling in the tummy and the chest, and look forward, so the head is leading you forward. Now stay looking forward, and this time you're moving back with your pelvis, staying looking forward to sit back towards the heels, come forward again. Now this time, as you sit back, can you move the pelvis back towards the right heel, looking forward. If you need to walk the hands in to help you lift up the chest, that's fine. Come forward again, and then send the pelvis back towards the left heel, still looking up. If your life, you need to know what's happening in the room, in case an adult comes and stamps and stands on you, and then come forward and then send the pelvis back towards the right heel and just see, can you linger there, looking up, looking up, polishing that heel, good, and then come forward, can you sit back towards the other heel, scanning your room, where's the toy gone, polishing that heel, and then come forward, and then send the pelvis back towards the right heel, slide the left leg away from you till that foot just goes beyond the knee, just goes beyond the other foot. Now, um, walk the hands in as much as you like to support the head and come forward again and then send the pelvis back towards the left heel as you slide the right leg away from you. Good. And then come forward. And then once more, pelvis back towards the right heel as you slide that left leg away. Walk the hands round and in as much as you like, and then just see, can you wiggle the pelvis as if you wanted to find the floor to the other side of that right heel. Don't force anything, and then the pelvis comes back up. And then just see, can you do that a few times. So you'll notice the head makes a little counter journey to the pelvis. The head swings to one side as the pelvis goes down, swings to the other side as the pelvis comes up. Come back onto all fours. And then send the pelvis back towards the left heel as the right leg slides away from you. Again, walk the hands in as much as you like. And then just see, can you find the floor with the pelvis? It requires your knees to soften, the feet to soften, the hips to soften, and then come back up. Use the eye, so the nature how the head makes a journey, so if you wanted to see around yourself, if there's a big movement in the spine and the shoulders, countering, countering the movement of the pelvis. So come back onto all fours, keep the toes pointed, and then just see, can you sit back on the, on the heels? Lovely, lovely stretch for the front of the foot, for the ankles. Good, and then come forward curl the toes under, and then see, can you sit back on the toes to stretch out the plantar side of the, of the foot. The weight should be going down through that sweet spot between the kind of the second and big toe, not sweet for, for some people, and then come forward, point the toes once more, and again, just see, can you sit back on the heels. If you want to increase the loveliness of this stretch, you bring the hands behind you, and lift the knees to really stretch out the front side of the foot. Good, and then come back, curl the toes under, and then once more just sit back on the, on the heels. And then can you lift one knee out to the side? So what has to happen is your pelvis has to shift onto the other heel. Come back, and then for the other knee to go out to the side, the weight has to sit on the one heel. Good, and then come back to centre. And then please leave it alone and come and lie down on your back for a second. <laughs> Good. Have your feet on the floor and your knees about hip distance apart. Have your arms long by your side. That's it. So feet are about hip distance apart and knees hopefully over the heels, so heels not too far away from you. Have the arms just long by your side. Take a breath in, and as you breathe out, press down into the feet. 
pull in that spot two inches below the navel so you're going into that 12 o'clock position and you keep that as you continue to peel your spine off the mat vertebrae by vertebrae until the weight comes just between the shoulder blades. Breathe in here to the sides and to the back of the body and then peel back down one vertebrae after the other till you come back definitely in 12 o'clock and then you release into a neutral place. So again, once more, take a breath in. As you exhale, press down into the feet evenly. Begin to peel up vertebrae by vertebrae. You'll feel the weight shifting into one vertebrae, the next, the next, the next, until you find a spot between the shoulder blades. Breathe in there. And then see, can you begin that journey back down? As if you're an airplane coming to land on a runway. Try not to deviate from side to side till the lower back lands. And then you release into neutral. At a sort of funny moment then. <laughs> Good. Bring the arms up towards the ceiling, palms facing each other. And just reach the arms up towards the ceiling so your shoulders separate, um, lift a little bit. And then exhale, drop the shoulders back into the mat, keeping the arms long. Inhaling up, exhaling, dropping the shoulders back. Once more, inhaling up, exhaling, dropping the shoulders back. Turn the palms towards the knees. Inhale to take both arms overhead towards the floor behind you. Circle them round towards the hips. Inhale, come back up towards the ceiling. And keep going in circles, three in one direction, that's it, overhead, round to the side, inhale to the top, and then reverse, bring the hands down by the hips, sweep them round to the side, come back up to the top, and two more like this, again, just gently stretching out the chest, but keeping the back down, good, and then release. Please leave that today, and come to lie on your front. You're all okay, not too good. Um. good. So have the two hands on top of each other, and then initially just rest your forehead on the backs of the hands. And then please just roll the chest and the pelvis a little bit from one side to the other. That's it. Just uh, it really is if you're rolling yourself into the into the floor, squashing yourself into the floor. Good. and then pause, bend the knees, bring the feet towards the ceiling, glue them together and have your right cheek on the backs of the hands. And then begin to tilt your knees, be uh, legs behind you, feet behind you, to the right, and then come back to centre. So just tilting to the right, good, and back to centre. And in this class, you all know by now, although I'm asking you to tilt the legs, Really, I'm not interested in the legs, really. It's how you're allowing the weight to shift to the right-hand side of the chest and the tummy to um, bring about this lovely twist through the spine. Once you've done about five to the right, pause, and then do a couple to the left. But go carefully, because the head is fixed in this position, so it's a more powerful twist you're inviting into the spine. And once you've done about three to the left, go from side to side. See if you just develop a nice rhythm, going from side to side, never dropping the legs, but they're moving because of how you're shifting through your centre. Just pause, turn the head to the other side, so it's the left cheek on the backs of the hands, and then just begin to tilt the legs to the left a few times, and back to centre. See if you can just follow this lovely twist as it, it snakes up between the shoulder blades. It's easy breathing, creates a pull through the neck. And then once you've done about four or five to the left, then just tilt them a few times to the right. Then carefully checking the jaw is relaxed. And then go from side to side, just developing this twist. Pause just allow.
allow the legs to go long for a second. Stretch the arms out in front of you, shoulder distance apart. Legs are about shoulder distance apart. And then just see, can you lengthen the left leg as you lengthen the right arm away from you and lengthen to lift, just looking up at the, at the right hand. Good. And then lower. And then lengthen the other diagonal. Stretch the left hand and the right foot away from each other first. Keep them lengthening as you just lift to look up at the hand, lifting and lengthening the arm. Good. And then come back. And then once more, other diagonal. So you lengthen first to lift. Good. And then come back. And then other diagonal, lengthen to lift. Good. Come back. Just bring the um, hands on, on top of each other once more. Bring your heels together, bend the knees, um, and then have your knees as wide as you can up to do you can, but keep the heels together. Take a breath in, and then just squeeze the heels into each other without lifting anything, and then release. Squeeze those heels, lovely, lovely um, hip muscles being activated, good, and then release, and two more like that, squeeze the heels, good, and then release, and then last time, squeeze, good, and then release. Just bring the hands by the chest, lift the tummy and the ribs away from the floor, push yourself up and back. So you bring the pelvis onto the heels, looking down, just, just to stretch out the back from that position. And then look forward, come back onto all fours, good. and then please come and sit facing the front. You're okay, one. Do you need to put that booster on now? Not a bit, just please do it. I'll put it on just in case. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> you have to use that one chance wisely. <laughs> so please come and sit with your so um, soles of the feet facing each other. Um, not too close, not too close. Bring the right hand onto the floor. Take hold of the left leg, left foot rather. And then, um, as you remember from last week, we're just leaning over, keeping the head upright. See, keeping the head upright means these ribs have to do something special to keep the head upright, and then come back to centre. Mm -hmm. So the head stays upright, good, and then come back to centre, mm -hmm. and once more. And then see, to come back, can you initiate the coming back by squashing the grape? sit bone. And then to lean over, actually you can initiate by squashing the grape underneath the right sit bone to come up, good, and then come back. And then once more leaning over and then lift the foot and bring the knee to the inside of the elbow, good, and then to the outside of the elbow. To the inside of the elbow, to the outside of the elbow. So here we are, internally rotating the femur, externally rotating in the hip joint, and then once more bringing the knee to the inside, so the foot goes back towards its own bottom. And just notice, so you're probably more weighted onto the right sit bone, just can you lengthen down into that left sit bone a little bit more? Fantastic. Over, bring the foot to the inside, coming on to two sit bones, and then once more to the, uh, bring the knee to the inside, good. And then bring this foot onto the floor, just in front of you, over to the right. And just see where can you comfortably reach the foot, foot, good. And then see, can you bring it to the other side? of that right thigh and plant it down on the floor and try and sit up nice and tall and then turn everything to the right, turn, uh, keep everything turned, bring the head and eyes to look forward on the horizon and then
then just take your eyes back to the right, keeping the nose looking forward. Eyes back to the right. Good. And then come back to centre. We'll switch over to the other side. So the left hand supports you. Shift the weight onto the left hand side, keeping the head upright. Good. Lengthen back through the sit bone to come back to centre. Once more leaning over. Good. And then squashing the grape. Once more. So we're perched on this left sit bone. This is standing, walking, being able to, to shift the weight onto one side. And then see, can you bring the knee to the inside of the elbow? And then we'll come over, bring the knee to the outside of the elbow. Keeping the head upright to the inside and then to the outside. Good. Once more, can you take the foot back to its own bottom? Maybe sit on two towards two sit bones. Very hard. Good. And then bring the knee to the outside and to two sit bones. Good. And then just see, can you bring, where can you explore different places on the floor with that uh, heel? And some of you might be able to bring the foot to the other side of that left thigh, stamp down the foot, try and get tall, push out the tummy, lengthen up through the crown of the head, <coughs> turn everything to look to the back of the room, keep everything turned, bring the head and eyes to look forward. So there's our paparazzi pose. But keep turn the eyes to the left. Not such a paparazzi pose. <laughs> eyes to the left. Good, so everything's differentiated. And then undo and come back to centre. Bring the hands to the floor behind you, fingers facing forward. And then see, remember, tilting the knees to the right, so that left knee tries to find the floor, the inside. Good, and then come back. Um, you just might want to, sorry to disturb you, turn your mats the other way actually in the mind state just to give you a bit more cushion. And if you have your blanket, um, I'd probably have the blanket sort of underneath the knees so they available. You might even want to fold them back and half back. Standing the feet, tilt the knees to the left, pushing out the tummy. Good. And so, you know, all those in the orange ball workshop, remember we're initiating from the middle, we're pulling in, pulling in to come back, pushing out to go to the right. And this left hand becomes light, so much so you could bring it over to the floor on the, on the right. Good. And then we'll come back. Again, looking down, pulling in the tummy, pulling in the tummy, begin to push out the tummy to go to the other side. So the right hand finds the floor, good, and then come back, good, and then we'll go to the other, other side once more, and then maybe again, you can lift the pelvis to, to present the weight into the knees, good. other side once more, so shift, shifting, bring the hand round, maybe you could present the weight into the knees, good, and then come back. There's one more variation to go to this side, so go to the other side, hand comes round, you lift the pelvis, so only do this if, you're, if the floor allows you on the knees, don't force it, and then can you bring your left foot to stand by your left hand? And then can you take the foot back and then back to where it came from? We'll come back and to the other side. Can you bring the right foot to stand by the hand? Good. Good. Now can you just come up? Good. Good. Bring the hands back down where they came from. Take the leg back. Come back. To the other side, oh, no hands. You just guess what's coming there. So bring that foot down and then bring the that's it. That's it. 
place that was good. Go back down. And now C. No hands. If you need to use the hands, it's fine. Well done, Paul. Come on, come back. We'll wait for you to come back. So we'll go to the left. Heels together, those hip muscles. Yeah. Okay, so, see how the arms can come forward as a counter. So, the pelvis goes back. Good. So, we transfer weight. Good. And we come up. Good. So, to bring this foot to standing. Well done. So, head forward. Knees back. Imagine you've injured your arm and you need to get up off the floor. Or you've got a glass in your hand <laughs> and you don't want to spill a drop. Good. And we'll just see. And we'll Good. Good. to rest on your on your back. Well done everyone. Challenging class. Just inviting the breath into the sides and to the back of the body. I think we've worked a bit of everything <laughs> the spine, the hips, the feet. Shoulders and standing work. Just roll the head and eyes a little bit from side to side. Close. Your eyes can be open or closed, it's entirely up to you. Good. Come to centre. So rather than bring you back up, I'll end the class there for me. So 